Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I wanted to tackle a question that you guys have been asking me um, for a while now, and that's how do I get my photos to look their best online? So as aside from the first step that I'm about to show you, which is just simply applying sharpness to the image, um, I did want to talk about the lens selection real quick. And that's, um, for me personally, I use the Sigma Art 85, and that lens is pretty sharp, wide open. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how sharp. I'm gonna zoom into the photo. This is 100%. So you guys can see before any sharpness is applied, this is how the, the photo looks like um, wide open. If I were to use a cheaper lens like a 50 millimeter 1.8 by Canon, I've used that lens before in the past and wide open, it's not really sharp, um, but it does tend to get more sharp, uh, sharper around F 2.2 to F 2.8. And it gets its sharpest around, I believe 5.6 to eight to maybe even 11 but I tend to shoot with the wide aperture. So F 2.2 to F 2.8 is a good range for that lens and other cheaper lenses, you know, stop down, they do get a little bit sharper. So yeah, unless you have a, unless you invested in the lens like the Sigma 85 or the Sony 85, then I would stay around, you know, 2.2 to 2.8. So yeah, aside from the lens choice, um, of course I just apply some sharpening. So in Lightroom under the detail section, the detail tab, um, under sharpening, I'm not, I'm not going to adjust the radius, the detail or the masking, but I am going to just apply sharpness to the entire image. And usually I, I stick to around 60. So if you guys, you know, I'm going to just, um, you know, take off the sharpness hitting control Z. So you guys can um, see exactly what's going on and just pay attention to the eyes, the eyelashes and the hair. So I'm going to reapply it. So it's not that much of a difference, but it is going to be a difference when, when I'm editing or when I resize down for Facebook. So after I do this step, I go into Photoshop for, so, you know, some more selective sharpening. So I'm going to go to, um, edit in, and then I'm going to go to edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. So now I just got to wait, you know, if you guys have a slower computer, then it might take longer. If you have a faster computer, then more than likely it'll, you know, this step will be a lot faster. So right now Photoshop is about to open up. And then once it finishes this little loading area, then I can show you the next step. So yeah, once you, once your image, you know, opens up, what I usually do is I go to, um, control plus or command plus, and I just go to hundred percent. Um, on the bottom left is where the percentage is. So I'm going to just go to hundred percent and cause I just, I just want to see the sharpness being applied as I apply it. So from this step here, I'm going to hit control J or command J if you're on, uh, on a Mac and that's going to duplicate the background layer. It's going to say layer one here. And what you're going to do to this is you're going to go to filter, um, go to other, go to high pass. This is the method that I use all the time just because I find it to be the most accurate. Um, if you have a big image, like this file size here is around, is pretty big because it's the a7R2. So that's around 42 megapixels. If you have a smaller image, more than likely, um, you'll be using, um, smaller numbers uh, right here. The radius, um, at one looks pretty good for the big image that I'm working on. But if, um, if you had have a small image and you choose like radius one or something larger, it might look like this and stuff like this is what you want to avoid. You want it to be just the finer details. So for this specific image that I'm working on, I'm going to keep it around one. So I'm going to click okay. And then I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to overlay. And last time I did a video like this, somebody told me to go to, to change the blending mode from not overlay, but to vivid light. But I found the sharpness to be a little too much. So I'm going to keep it to overlay. So and I'm going to toggle it off and on. Pay attention to the hair and the eyelashes. So again, it's just a small little bump, but the, it is going to make a difference when you're, you, when you resize it down. So aside from this step here, what you can also do is if you want to selectively apply like sharpness to like, say for example, um, her right eyebrow or something like that, what you can also do is just duplicate this layer. I'm going to hit control J. And what it just did right now is reapplied sharpness to everything. And I don't want that. So I'm going to select this second layer, this duplicate of the first layer. Um, and I'm going to hit the layer mask. I'm going to click on that. 
and I'm going to hit Control or Command I. And what that did is basically hide everything. Everything that's in black is hidden. So what you're going to do now is just paint um, white onto what you want to be sharpened. And what you what you paint white on is going to reveal um, the sharpness. The, so I'm going to paint on this eyebrow here. And if you pay attention to the um, settings in the opacity and flow, I keep the opacity to be 100%, 100% the flow to be 88%. So yeah, so what I'm doing now is just painting over her eye, her eyebrow, her right eyebrow. And I'm gonna toggle it, toggle it off and on. And it's not that much of a difference. You probably see it if I make duplicates. So I'm gonna group this into a layer, or group these layers into a group and toggle it off and on. See, that's exactly what I just applied. But something like this is what you wanna avoid because then you start to get fringing and stuff like that. It doesn't look good. So I just wanted to show you guys how I would selectively apply sharpness to something. And of course, um, if I did wanna keep it in this selection, I probably, you know, adjust the opacity. So yeah, so you can apply sharpness to anything you want really. Just try to avoid it looking, uh, looking like it's fringing, which is starts to look weird, the colors, so. So yeah, aside from that, you're pretty much done. Then the last step is just resizing. So from here, what I'll tend to do is I'll just merge the images together, merge visible or flatten image, either or. And then from here, I'll go to um, image. I made a shortcut for it. I made an action, a Photoshop action, but I'm gonna show you guys how to manually do it. So it's image, go to image size, and you want the longest side to be 2048 pixels long. So for here, it's a, you know, it's a portrait orientation. So I'm gonna change the height to be 2048 pixels. And if you leave this little thing linked, uh, it, it'll automatically change uh, the width, of, width for you. So I'm gonna click okay. And then from here, oh, I did forget that sometimes when I'm in this step, depending on the sharpness of the image that it's at, I'll maybe add a little bit more sharpness. So I'll do that thing where I told you where I'll hit Control J, go to File, go to High Pass. And because now the image is smaller, um, it starts to look different. So then I'll go to like maybe um, change the radius to like 0.2 or you can faintly see it 0.5, uh, maybe 0.4, something like that. Uh, I'm gonna keep it to like maybe 0.3. Yeah, so then I'm gonna click OK and again go change the, the blending mode from normal to where is it? overlay and then I'm gonna toggle it off and on let's see pay attention to her hair um, I'm seeing it most up here so you guys can see that so from here merge visible um, then I'm gonna uh, not just I already resized it I was about to tell you I'm gonna resize it but not resize it but file save as and I'm gonna save it as Oh, oh, I was working with other pictures here. I'm gonna save it as, uh, what is that? Delete. Uh, save it as not a JPEG, which is what I used to do, but save it as a PNG because I did see that mentioned in an article, I can't remember where, and I tried it myself and the PNG file is actually a little sharper than the JPEG file. So if you want to look at absolute sharpest, then I would recommend saving the file as a PNG. So I'm gonna save it as a PNG. I'm gonna name it, uh, her name's Suzette. So I'm gonna name it Suzette, Suzette Super Sharp. <laughs> so that's gonna be how I'm gonna save it. So I'm gonna save it like that. Uh, I never really mess with these just because it's, you know, the same thing pretty much. It's just like a minor, minor difference. So I'm gonna click okay. And then it's gonna save the file. And from there, I'm pretty much done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too long, or at least if it was long, then you know you weren't too bored. I do plan to make more videos like these because you guys do want to know how I do certain things, how I make the colors pop, how I get, you know get the sharpness down to where you know where I want it to be, and other things like that. If you guys have any other suggestions on other things that are not involved in the shooting process, but the more the behind the scenes, behind the computer kind of thing, let me know if you guys have any suggestions so I can make those videos for you guys. If you haven't already liked the video, please give it a like and uh, take care.